uh, to our uh, September regular town board meeting. Before we get started on our regular town board meeting, we have a uh, public hearing tonight. And uh, our public hearing uh, is dealing with the water treatment plant improvements, which I'll have our town engineer talk about that in a second. Um, can I have a motion to enter into the public hearing portion of the meeting? I make the motion. Thank you. Do you have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, Lisa, would you please uh, just give us a little bit of background? Uh, so there's some large numbers out there. Um, a previous board uh, commissioned a study for our water treatment plant and our distribution distribution uh, center for water, and we received the 20,000 plus grant, NYSERDA grant, and BNL and uh, completed that study. And there's about $24 million worth of improvements that are recommended for our water treatment plant. And tonight is just a public hearing and there's some resolutions tonight that doesn't have anything to do with actually doing the work uh, that will come down the road. Uh, we have to do the work or part of it, but that's not tonight, okay? Uh, the whole purpose of this is that we're applying for a, uh, a WIA grant, W2A grant, uh, which is a maximum grant of $5 million, which obviously compared to $24 million is a small drop, but every drop helps. So, uh, Lisa, go ahead, please. Yeah, so um, Mike summarized it pretty well. Um, in June, we submitted a preliminary engineering report which included um, improvements to the water treatment plant as well as the water distribution system. Um, some background on the water treatment plant. It was originally constructed in 1939 and has had very minimal improvements since then. Um, there were some process upgrades in 1982 and then minor upgrades again in 2005. Uh, currently, uh, Joe and James are working on small improvements as they can, but there are quite a few um, important upgrades that need to be made. Um, most of the plant's treatment processes equipment is over four years old, which has exceeded its useful life. So we have summarized in that preliminary <coughs> engineering report a uh, number of improvements that we recommend making. Uh, as Mike indicated, we are applying for a VIA grant, which um, the max funding amount would be $5 million on that amount. Um, so again, we just want to preface this is you know, not binding at all what we're doing here today. It would just be setting us up to apply for that VIA grant and ultimately, hopefully, achieve that $5 million grant application. I'm sorry, grant funding through the application. <coughs> and Leah, uh, Lisa, just because we're applying for the grant doesn't mean we have to do any work at all at the treatment plant, so, correct? Correct, yeah, this is not binding. The town is not required to do anything. Even if we do uh, receive the $5 million, it doesn't need to be used. Um, it can be used for a portion of the project, I believe. So um, this preliminary engineering report included the water distribution system as well, but this via application, grant application, will only be for the water treatment plant. And just so everybody understands, I mean, $24 million is a lot of money, uh, but that's just at the treatment plant, okay? Uh, part of this nice sort of study that has been done uh, looks at the distribution part of the project and trying to bring water to different, there's still some parts of Seneca Falls that does not have water. Uh, so it brings that into the fold. Uh, it also looks at some sewer lines and so forth. Um, that's a much bigger number than $24 million. Um, just moving forward. It'll be some board down the road who will have to make these decisions. Uh, it won't be in the next uh, 12 months. Water authority. County water authority. Well, it's probably not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Uh, board members, any questions? Uh, and that's being studied by, ironically, the MRB group for the county. And we're looking at uh, doing the same thing, Steve. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but it's been a conversation for quite a while. Yep. Yeah. Probably get to be time. There's actually a study going on. MRB is actually doing a study for the county with that concept of the countywide water and sewer authority. So, yeah. Any questions from the board members will for Lisa? Will there be other projected grants that we can apply for that? So 
there will be um, SRF financing, I believe, for this project that will be applied for at a later date. Um, I am not positive on the additional grant applications that could be applied for for this, but I can definitely look into that and, and let you know. And again, that uh, magic word up in the sky is the multi-billion, billion, billion federal infrastructure monies that's supposed to be <coughs> happening out of Washington. But as we all know, things come out of Washington, uh, sometimes they don't happen. But that would be something, obviously, that would be applicable to this. Certainly, there's every small community throughout the country that has the same problems as we do. So, uh, but that's a possibility moving down the road. Uh, but we'll keep you abreast as we move along. Any questions from the public? Yes, sir. Are there any kind of details on what these improvements are? Or would, can we see these details? Yeah, the preliminary engineering report is, is available with the town clerk. Um, so that includes, like I said, the water plant um, improvements and the water distribution system. So this would just be for the uh, water treatment, or sorry, water plant improvement projects. Why can't that just be put online? We can put it online. Anything you can do in the town should be put online. Nope. Like tonight, yeah. the agenda should be yep. when you get it. After agenda. tonight, uh, that, that's a great idea. And absolutely put them online. Uh, Melissa, mm -hmm. okay. okay. Make sure you remind me tomorrow to get that document from you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa has done a great job of uh, highlighting the different high points of the project type of thing. I mean, even in, I mean, just like your agenda, you shouldn't have to come here to know what's going to be talked about tonight. I don't normally come to the town board meeting. It would have been nice that when I went to see it, that there was a town board meeting that this, even if it was like a, you know, preliminary draft and maybe more things added, you should be able to find that. And we're in a technology world. Sure. We should be able to find this right now. And the minutes when you're done should be posted just like the Center School, School District does every time at meeting. We are working to, uh, to get everything online ahead of time and so forth, but yeah, it's a great idea. I have a town manager that can do that for you. I took the note. <laughs> <laughs> You're managing the town. This should be something that everybody in this town should go look online in 30 seconds yes, and find. 100 percent right. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Thank you. We will achieve that for next month, okay? okay. You will. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Okay. I have a motion to close the public hearing. I make the motion. Thank you. Second? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, Town Clerk Greer, could you please take roll call? Aye. Mike Ferrara. Present. Steve Churchill. Here. Frank Senegrovi. Here. Caitlin Leskowski. Here. John Dyson. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Could you please stand for the pledge in a moment of silence? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So it's a rather lengthy agenda, but there's uh, some things, a lot of resolutions that hopefully uh, will be quickly. Uh, I'm going to have to tell you right up front, uh, we have to go into executive session here at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, I hope it will only take 10 minutes, okay? And then we'll come out, and it's a personnel matter, and when we come out, we will uh, continue with the agenda, okay? Uh, Chief Pinstra. All right, thank you very much. The Seneca Falls Police Department believes in recognizing civilians, their actions, and, and their outstanding efforts in service to the community. In keeping with this belief, the town of Seneca Falls and the Seneca Falls Police Department recognize Hannah M. Sullivan for her outstanding efforts that occurred June 11, 2022. Hannah, if you could just come up, I'll explain to you what's going on. <laughs> your applause because she did an outstanding thing. And this is actually our first civilian recognition for, for a life-saving award that we, that we, at least I've ever given. Um, I have Lieutenant Snyder here who organized and, and got all of his family 
um, and, and got everything together for us tonight, so I appreciate that. On June 11, 2022, at approximately 3.28 p.m., Seneca Falls Police received a 911 call regarding someone who fell in the Seneca Cuga Canal in the area of Ovid Street Bridge. The caller went on to say that someone was attempting to rescue the person. That someone was 16-year-old Hannah Sullivan from Romulus. Celebrated her birthday, didn't she? So, <laughs> she's 17. Hannah was spending some time with her family on the south side of the canal and she observed a young person fall into the canal. Hannah could see the person having trouble staying above water and, with complete disregard of her own safety, jumped into the canal. Hannah was able to help the young person stay above water until a nearby boat responded to help. Hannah's quick response, recognition of the severity of the emergency, immediate actions resulted directly in saving the life of a 14-year-old girl. Therefore, Hannah Sullivan's actions qualify her for the life-saving award. Is uh, Jacqueline House concerns pertaining to Cuban Nation? Is Jacqueline here? Okay. Our next petitioner is Allison Stokes, honoring David Galeas and Wilhelmina Puskamas. Puskamas. No, Puskamas. Puskamas. Thank you. <laughs> is the poem available? There's a uh, microphone right here. Do you want me to hold it? John, would you? I, I can hold it. Never mind. I, I hey, just am used to having a podium in this room. Can you put the power strip on? I don't think I should. How, how about if I just get behind this? This would be nice. There you go. Okay, thank you. I didn't know it's broken. Oh, that's why. So you're going to Okay. I'm just saying, the power strip right there. You're live, I'm awake. <laughs> okay. Some of us are harder hearing. All right, I'll speak up. But you gotta have the mic in your mouth. Uh, up, no, the other, there you go. Now we got you. Okay. You can hear me better now? I can hear you better than I can. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. My name is Allison Stokes. I live in an apartment in Rochester. My home is at 63 West Baird Street in Seneca Falls. And I have often been a petitioner at town board meetings, but not since COVID. Tonight I'm here to speak about two citizens who departed this world this year, people who made tremendous contributions to our community. Councilman David DeLalis and Ludovico Sculpture Trail founder, Wilhelmina Postmacans. Dave passed away eight months ago on January 16th at age 74, and Wilhelmina passed away just last month on August 18th at age 89. First about Dave DeLalis. 
Some of you attended the wonderful ceremony honoring Dave in just 10 days ago on Sunday, August 28th at 4 p.m. At the, in Veterans Square. In May, a native redbud tree had been planted in his memory in the northeast corner of the spacious square. Then, after a lovely plaque had been designed, created, and installed, the tree and plaque were dedicated that afternoon. A good number of community leaders and activists were in attendance. Leading the ceremony was Father James Fennessy, pastor at St. Patrick's Church for the last 15 years. He spoke extemporaneously of Dave's devotion and service to his community and to his church. Pointing to the young newly planted tree, Father Jim spoke of the cycle of life, life and also spoke eloquently of hope. Listening intently was Dave's beloved wife, Jean. They had celebrated their 50th anniversary shortly before his death. I read now some words from his obituary. Dave felt his biggest accomplishments in life were his duty to serve people. He served for two years on the Seneca Falls Village Council, and then when the village dissolved into the town of Seneca Falls, he served another eight years with the Seneca Ta Falls Town Council. Dave enjoyed every minute of his job working for people of Seneca Falls. To me, Dave DeLayla's most significant board vote was six years ago when Mary Saratori made a motion to put into effect Local Law 3 mandating the closure of the Seneca Meadows landfill by 2025, Dave seconded the motion. Voting for the motion were two more board members, the late Annette Lutz and Vic Peretta. On December 6, 2016, the only person in opposition was Supervisor Greg Lazaro. Local Law 3 remain, remains in effect. And now I speak of Wilhelmina Pusmakans, the Frank J. Ludovico Sculpture Trails founder. I knew Wilhelmina, but not well. I had visited her art gallery on Ovid Street, attended her 80th birthday party in 2013 at her cottage on Cayuga Lake, and visited her in her Cayuga Street home. But I came to know her oldest daughter, Elizabeth Rossetti, much better. Liz made frequent trips to Seneca Falls from her home in Virginia, both to see her mom and to work on the trail. When her mother passed away, I wanted to support Liz and help with the trail. On Wednesday, August 26, Wilhelmina's longtime friend, Virginia DeJohn, and I drove together to Buffalo to attend her wake. The next day, Jenny and I drove back to Buffalo to attend Wilhelmina's memorial mass, <coughs> interment, and the luncheon reception that followed. At lunch, I was delighted to sit next to a sculptor who is working on a new work for the trail. Liz now takes over responsibility as the leader of the Ludovico Sculpture Trail, and she was sitting right beside me tonight as I speak about her mom's magnificent achievement, Liz. In 1998, just before the turn of the century, Frank L. J. Ludovico and his wife Julia deeded their property along the canal to Wilhelmina to establish a sculpture trail. Married for 60 years, the couple had four daughters. Frank passed away in 2009 and Julia in 2020. A year ago, I met Frank and Julia Ludovico's eldest daughter, Claire Ludovico. She now lives in Seneca Falls, and some of you know her. When I phoned Claire to say I would be speaking about the Ludovico's generosity tonight, she told me she could not attend. Why? On Friday, Claire tested positive for COVID and is now taking antiviral medication for the fifth day. Fortunately, her symptoms have been mild. The trail, it's a magical place. It's, quote, where art and nature meet. How important it is that a portion of the Seneca Falls Downtown Redevelopment Initiative, the DRI money, is earmarked for the trail. If you have not yet walked its full length, if you are able, you must. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, did Mrs. House or Miss House come in to the meeting? 
Okay. All right. Then we're going to move on to anybody from the privilege of the floor. Can I ask a question? In the last couple of days, there's been an increase in activity between the Fraction Tribe and Cuba Nation. And I'm assuming you guys have seen the things that were happening on 89. Um, have you seen the video of what went down Garden Street Extension, down Garden Street, and onto Ovid? What is happening and what are we doing? Because I live over by their farmland. And the missionaries, this is what the Fraction likes to call them, whatever they are, um, are now doing target practice with AR-15s in my backyard. Okay. So, uh, I drive down Bear Street every day to 15 to 20 people, bulletproof vests. I don't live in a military state. This is getting ridiculous. And I couldn't agree with you more, okay? Um, what are we doing? Well, I just pressed charges. On, uh, Let's hope they get arrested. Club. I must have heard mm -hmm. over 200 charges. shots. So, or it was Saturday or Sunday, I played where? both days. When I played golf on Sunday ah. or Saturday at the country club, I heard over 200 rounds of yeah. ammunition fired. Mm -hmm. yeah. The answer I'm going to give you, you're not going to like, okay? Nothing. I, no, no, <laughs> no, nothing is the wrong answer. That's not mm -hmm. the answer I'm going to give you, okay? okay. All right. We are working 24-7, okay? Chief Pinstra, the Seneca Falls Police Department, Myself and the town board are working, trying to get other agencies, law enforcement agencies, okay, at the federal level to help us intercede as much as we can. I call two places. I'll get back to you. Now when I call, they must see my number. Click. Okay. They don't answer. So you they don't answer their emails? You understand our frustration. We, I we, understand we, we, that, but... On 89, there is a video on Facebook where the nation police are blocking Route 89. A Seneca Falls police officer comes, they unblock that road. That man should have been arrested. He has no right to block that road. They arrested that man. I don't care what side anybody believes in, but I watched the video of them tase that man across the street from nation property drag him, then in the paper, and Finger Lakes News Radio, and Finger Lakes One, they only report the, that side, that he had brass knuckles. They wouldn't figure out he had brass knuckles if they didn't tase him across the street and drag well, him. Before he was tased, okay, uh, he threw an object at the nation police, okay? And that's when the nation police interceded. Right, I get that, but he can't go out onto a state road and have no or they, I've been told a hundred times that they can't pull you over. I've been told by multiple people they have been pulled over by the nation police. They they, they cannot pull you over. They do. And if they a nation, do but but if a if a nation Stop. police officer pulls you over, my recommendation to you is run him over. Well, <laughs> that's what I'll do. No, that, that's not my recommendation. That's what I'm gonna do. That's not my recommendation. <laughs> okay, two right, two wrongs don't make a right. But you know what? We have nobody protecting us, Mike. My grandson was on Garden Street the other day when this all went down. I made it very clear to the officer that just took the arrest report, report for me. If that, they drive down that road again and they're anywhere in sight of my grandchild, they are getting a bottle through their windshield. If you guys are not going to protect us, we are going to start protecting ourselves. They are tearing down houses in our neighborhoods with electric and power and everything else still hooked up to them where our children go to play. They are coming out as the, she said. My children drive down the street, they see armed guards with guns, with bear spray. They're petrified. This is not Clint Halftown's town. And it's time, whoever's in his pocket, get out or get out of office. Because you know what? We're standing up for ourselves from now on. So when you guys see all those people calling for help, we're gonna go help. Because those children, those Indian children, attend our schools with our children. Those are our children's friends. Those Indians also work in a lot of our businesses. They pay taxes just like we do. We aren't protecting them, and you guys are protecting us. So either start or get out of office, because this is beyond, beyond ridiculous anymore. I'm not putting up with it anymore, and I know a lot more people aren't. And I've seen it on the internet, whether you've seen it or not, 
Most citizens don't believe in this police force and they don't believe in this board because they think you're in Clint's pocket. Well, guess what? My grandson's life means more to me than Clint Halftown. A any human life means more to me and uh, I can't speak for the other four board members. Uh, I've been accused of being in a lot of people's pockets, but obviously I'm way too big to fit in anybody's pocket, okay? So I'm not in Clint Halftown's pocket, I'm not in the landfill pocket, I'm in nobody's pocket. So okay? what can we let do? Me, let me, I, I, I've let you speak. Okay, mm -hmm. let me just say a couple things, okay? When I say to you that we are doing everything in our ability to make a concerted effort to bring some type of resolution to the issue, okay? We can't arrest Fugan Nation police officers. They are a recognized federal um. They are not recognized as Fugitive police. Sir, they are recognized. Sir, they are. About sir, this. sir, I've already spoke to the FBI about this. And right. everybody, everybody I don't know who you're talking to the FBI, but they are and recognized. They stated to be tribal police, you must have a tribal card to that tribe. Sir, they are recognized. If they are active police, then why are they ripping innocent people out of their cars in the middle of 89 on Saturday? When the lady who was driving her car called the 911 number. A the sergeant on ship was sitting in front of Clint Halftown's mother's house and she was told we only have two officers in duty and they are busy at the moment. We'll send somebody as soon as we can. While her and her family was ripped out of their car. They are not Cuban Nation. Not true. Chief Pinsley, could you talk a little bit to the authority? What about the three people who sent to Pennsylvania? Chief the, the elderly lady who was drug across the street five hours without her insulin. Told them five hours. Seneca Falls was called. Seneca Falls never showed up. Tell me they were not called. I was present at the protest. Sir, sir, uh, sir can, you let, can you let Chief Kitra explain yeah. the uh, the authority that the Cuban Nation has, please? The Cuban Nation, sure, please. Ahead. The Cuban Nation, please. So, and why do we do? the Cuban Nation is recognized by the federal government as a law enforcement agency, whether you like it or not. They are. They have law enforcement authority over Native Americans on Indian owned land. And the BIA has stated that 64,000 acres of never disestablished territory is Indian land. Period. Okay. Whether you like it or not. It's not a, right. Right. It's not a reservation. It, it's Indian land. It's not a reservation. Right. It's in dispute. I mean, it's, in it's, dispute. it's not a reservation. It's not their land. Exactly. So, so you have to have three. It's not their sovereign. This is the state of the law, though. But Lynn Wagner and Chris Jensen are not natives, and they were pulled over and surrounded on Route 89. So, so to answer, answer your question about, about the incident on, on that left up, went up through Garden Street, we are actively investigating that and asking anybody that has information on that to come in so we can actually... I just pressed charges, so I hope you arrest them. You, you gave a statement. Yeah, no, I went over and told them that I want them arrested. Yes, I understand that, but we still have to build a case. So just because we see a video. It's on a video. It's on three videos now that you have. I, I understand. All the press not on multiple videos. videos. We okay. still have to get depositions and, and witness statements in order to. On our property. On our land, not Indian land. We still have to get depositions. What does Clint have to get to get his people arrested? You tell me. Because Clint just walks out of the road and takes them. But yet we've got to go through all these long, drawn out, got to get this, got to get that. But we're it's our gonna, land. We're not going to violate anybody's civil rights. Oh, right. but we let Clint violate everyone's. Uh, that, that, let me, let me you have to understand something, okay? The Cuban Nation is a recognized entity. Is Garden Street a recognized entity of what village? Okay, Seneca Falls or Indian? Just wait a second. The federal government. The federal okay. government is recognizing. I have no authority. Seneca yes. County or Seneca Falls has no authority to say, you know what, Clint Halftown shouldn't be the recognized leader. You know what, I don't like Vladimir Putin, who's in Russia, but I have no authority to make. So the you're Russia waiting for an uprising? Is that what you guys are waiting for? Someone to get killed? Because that's what's gonna end up happening. That's the last thing. That's I'm all they talk about on the internet. And guess what? Well, We're caught in the crossfire. My suggestion is don't get on the internet. That's my first suggestion. Yeah, okay. Well, my second suggestion is, is that I am in constant discussions, okay? 
I am, all right? No, 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 I'm not no, no, lying no. to you, I am, okay? I am trying to re bring a peaceful resolution to this issue. There's a civil war going on within the Cuban nation. There's nothing different, it's a civil war, bottom line, okay? And I am trying to bring both sides to the table so that the people, you, me, our grandkids, our kids, are protected. I am doing everything in my power. Okay. But yeah, in the, in the process of you taking and trying to do this, my grandson could have got killed the other day on his bicycle because that truck was driving the way it was. Thank God my grandson was smart enough to get the hell out of the way. Yes, thank God. I, I agree. Thank God. But you know what? There's nobody here that's going to drive down there and take care of the problem. There's nobody here because we got to wait for Clint to speak up and say what he wants done. We are we are investigating Seneca Falls Police Department in conjunction with other law enforcement agencies are investigating the situation. Well, they should have never been in town to start with. But they should have taken 89 right to Pennsylvania. Okay. Would I, do I disagree with you on that issue? I don't. I don't. You're 100% right. But... And not taking those decisions. So that it's okay for us to get out of Clint's and do no, whatever we want to do, okay. right? Because he can come into our village and do what he chooses. So we can go to his village and do what we choose? Okay, hold on. This for a second. Chief, what you're saying is that the federal government record is 64,000 acres. Even though he only owns certain land, is it only the land he technically owns on the tax roll? Or is it what he recognizes the 64,000 acres? It's a good question. So because I want to know the answer to that, because my initial, house is in that, two of them. Yeah, initially they, they started their police force on three different cuts. You had to mm -hmm. be a federally recognized tribe, you had to have uh, um, Indian land, and a federally recognized leader. Okay. That's what they started. Okay, so when I, when I call the BIA, I will tell you, and I call the Eastern BIA lady, the lady who answered the phone, I said, we have a problem here. This was when the first thing with the tearing the house is down a couple weeks ago. She laughed and said, yes, we know he thinks he's in power. That's literally what the woman on the phone said to me. And then gave me the number of the other people to call. So I, I have letters from the BIA yeah. just that. But he's but federally recognized, but he's not the leader is no, what she basically no. said. No. That's what she told me on the phone. He's federally recognized, but again, well, and I'm not saying I, I, no, I'm just saying I, the town of Seneca Falls, this board, Seneca County Board of Supervisors, does not have the authority to remove and, anybody and I from a sovereign nation. But from but your point of view, there is no sovereign. There is. They've applied for seven acres to be put into trust. So they see what would be your suggestion? And they have not approved. No, I'm just saying. No, no. What would be your suggestion? They, they don't have a sovereign nation in this county. But they're they're in a the human, they're a nation. Okay. They're, they're squatters until they're approved by the federal government. Well, they're squatters. Excuse the BIA, me. And, and, the BIA nothing but, and they're nothing but American citizens, except the our laws don't apply to them. Excuse me, sir. But our laws our laws apply to them when they go to our schools. One second, please. I'm going to back your statement. I'm going to go back to your statement. Who's not sovereign? There is no sovereign. There is no sovereign nation in Seneca County. They applied for it many years ago, and it still has not been decided. Okay. Seven acres down in the corner of eighty nine. But who are you talking about? Clint Halftown or what? Clint Halftown. Okay, so Clint Halftown. Let's get this straight here. Clint Halftown is an individual. He's an individual that's causing a lot of terror in this town with both his own people and the non-native citizens. I would agree with that. But, as but far that as group of people applied for... But as far as sovereign... Land 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 trust. Excuse me, but I'm on the agenda here today, anyways, um, my name is okay. Jackson House. Oh, um, okay. As far as... We, uh, call, we called you... We called yeah, you. I was running out on the... Google gave me the wrong... The old address or whatever. <laughs> but, Welcome. Um, yeah, okay, so um, can I can I formally do this? Yes. Yes. My name is Jacqueline mm -hmm. House. I'm ja Jacqueline? Yes. Is it Jacqueline? Yes. Could you, Jacqueline, go to the podium? There's a microphone up there. Could you uh, please state your name and your residence? That's right, that's right. Okay. Um, Siano. Siano means hello in Cuban uh, language. My name is Jacqueline House, and my um, Daikono name is going after. I'm a Cuban Nation member and I'm of the Turtle Clan. And the reason why I asked to be put on the agenda is because of um, my concern for what's happening over here. And 
It's an atrocity for everybody involved, whether you're in a boat or whether you're in a canoe. So there's a relationship. There's a relationship, a two-row wampum relationship. And that, and, that, and that relationship consists of us in a boat and us in a canoe as brothers. Going down that river, side by side, as brothers. That, that, and that relates to peace and harmony. As long as, the sun, as long as the sun shines, the grass grows, and the waters flow. And I want to go back to what you were saying, there is no sovereignty. I'm going to correct you on that. There is a sovereignty. And it's called the Haudenosaunee Confederacy as a whole. And when you're talking about Ben Halftown, he is one man. He is one man that has no title. We have, in our own democracy, in our own constitution, uh, through the great law, we have chiefs, hereditary chiefs, and condole clan mothers. And we're being ignored by everybody. Because this is, this is way beyond everybody's scope. And when you talk about BIA, it's called silent annihilation through politics. 1492 was a day that our world changed and our world collided. It brought terror, it brought uncertainty, and it brought death. Right into 1779, when Sullivan Clinton campaign come in and burned us out of our homelands, that is a holocaust in your in your in your books, in your law. It is called a holocaust. We don't talk about that today, though, do we? There is so much stuff that has happened, and the divide and conquer that's been set out by the United States government and by the Canadian government is working. We see the result of it today when Clinton Half Town is pushing your law on our people. I just came from this supposedly tribal court. That does not belong on our territory. That is the people in your boat, this is, it belongs to yours. Yours and it's man through man made laws where we we, we, we govern ourselves through natural laws. There's a big difference, and there's a big difference at how we conduct ourselves, and our language was stolen from us, it was taken from us, and it was a big, it's a big issue to us of today because, why? Because it's how we relate to one another. We buried the weapons of war a long time ago, and what we've seen today is an act of terrorism and an act of war from Clint Half Town, and it's called, in your law, it's called treason. He's going against his own, his own government. But your boat, BIA, is backing him up. Because it's coming down to, what do we want? Land. You, everybody wants to steal land out from underneath us, and I'll let you know about another thing is about us women. We are the givers of life. We don't take life. We give life. And when Clinton is doing this, he's, he's reaping the benefits. Now I, I got one question for this whole town. Who is responsible for the bloodshed if it comes down to that? Whose blood, whose hands are gonna have blood on their hands? I, I, can yes. answer, I can answer that question. And, and you know, this is like, this is like, when I come over here to visit, I should feel comfortable. And now I'm being told I can't even walk on the land around these mercenaries, wherever the heck they are, I call them goons. You there's call, a, you there's call a threat. goons, they got... There's a threat, there's a direct threat that we will be getting thrown in this man-made made up jail, man made made up courts with a man made judge to judge us whether we're right or wrong. And they're inflicting terror on people. I just come from here and they're non native people that are saying that they're harassing them on a the road, they're buying bag, bumping and I'm trying to run them off the road now. Is that is that is that something we all stand for? There's kids in some of these cars, there's kids in some of these vehicles. And 
I want to I want to go back to one, one second, we, we, sir. We have, we have a time limit. Okay? Yeah, I know that. I knew okay. that I was going to get cut off. But I want to go back to. She can take care of age time. I want to go back to my roots. Who I am. You call this place Canada. In Canada, we call it Turtle Island. We, the people of Turtle Island, are grieving. There was a mass killing in Saskatchewan. Uh, P our people are doing the same thing over there that a Clinton Half Town is doing over here. Why? Because it's called, it's called colonization and it's called oppression. And your people are involved. So I want to I want to I want to offer those prayers today. I want to offer those prayers for both the boat and the canoe. Because you know what? It affects every one of us. You can ignore it all you want. It affects every one of us. What's happening here is affecting every single one of us and it's trickling down into inter international. Why? Because it's an international relationship. There's international agreements relate to peace and harmony. I don't find it very peaceful here, and I don't find that, that I, I, I can bring my grandkids here. I'm afraid that if I do, do or say the wrong thing, that I'm gonna end up in Pennsylvania in a prison. For what? For being Cayuga? So, I'm not here to lecture you, and I'm not here to tell you. You all know what's happening here. You are living in it. I didn't come here to tell you what's happening because I shouldn't have to. It's all over on social media. But you have a responsibility and an obligation to correct those wrongdoings that your ancestors and your father, forefathers have placed on us as a Cayuga Nation, as a whole, as part of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. That is a responsibility. And I want to say Nyawa means thank you for allowing me to speak because I was very unsure what I was going to say. I was very unsure of anything, of the outcome. But you know what? I want you guys to think about it. How would you feel if this was happening to your children? That's how I feel. So, now for your time and your understanding. And I hope that there is some understanding here. There, because we have people that are living here with children that are fearful every day. And I can't even imagine living in a house where I'm not sure if my house is going to get going to get destructed by this crazy man. It's terrorism, terrorism, and we're all standing back on one man, one man to all uh, to do all this destruction. So, thank you. Thank you. Oh, if you guys got any questions. Don't try to make it too complicated, please. No, I just I want to thank you for your time and your insights, and uh, we all are uh, trying to figure it out as much as we possibly can. So thank you. Anybody? I just want to ask one quick question for the chief. Is when the video was out the other day that I saw of the chase, are they because they're in what you say sixty-four thousand acres? allowed to do what they did on the road because i'm not i will i will i'm not the first person to say that the people that were chasing after the car were just as wrong as the people in the chase that was completely uncalled for on the streets going through the sms festival the other day completely dangerous multiple people could have been killed easily in that and they went right by elizabeth katie Stanton. you know if that was today you could have killed a ton of kids so I, think I guess the question is, no, what is their hold on, the, What is their jurisdiction? What is, no, actually, what are they allowed and not allowed to do on the roads of Seneca Falls? I get they have rights on the land of what they say is Cuban Nation land, but can he drive their cars speeding down the road and not have any consequences? That's the question I have to ask. I, I don't want to comment on open investigation. It doesn't have to be on the investigation. If I saw a Cuban Nation police officer flying down Baird Street like they do all the time, am I allowed to, am I, are you going to report them? Do you, you sit can, and arrest them for driving? So you can in? report it to us, you can report it to them. But if you catch them speeding, can you give them a ticket? 
What's that? If you catch them speeding, if you're sitting on Baird Street and they're speeding by, are they allowed to receive a ticket or are they because they're federal so cars? So because they they're a, a federally recognized law enforcement, they, it, depending on what they're doing, right, and what act, law enforcement is exempt from some tra vehicle and traffic laws when they're doing, you know. <laughs> problem is, is that they're in regular trucks and vehicles with no lights or sirens. Again. So that's we, where we, I'm trying to find as a parent of my kid driving down the road. Agreed. We are looking into this and anybody that has any information, we're taking it all in and we're going to decide what we have at the end of the investigation. What about the fact that our quote unquote businesses in town are helping Clint to do these things? Well, let, let's okay. go to the fact that the Petermans just helped out with bringing the backhoes to destroy these, these people's homes. You do know that these children do go to our school. So in some relation, we should be looking out for these little kids. Did you see that these children, a few of them had to leave their homes and go out of state because they were petrified that their houses were gonna get torn down? And then they got calls today from Seneca Falls School District saying that they didn't come to school and their parents had to tell them my child was taken out of state for fear of his own life and for their own safety. Is that how we treat these children? No. But because you're saying that they live on Indian land and no, they're not no, our responsibility, no, saying, but they're in our schools. Nobody's saying they live on Indian no. land. What I'm saying to you, no okay, if I own my house, okay, I own my house, and I decide to tear my house down. He doesn't own houses, though. Yes, he does. No, he does not. He owns the house. If you go back and look, you, Clint was given money to buy houses for each person. The Cuban Nation owned the house on Briarwood. And Clint is not Cuban Nation. Well, Clint is Clint Halftown. Again, but he's in charge the federal government right. says Clint Halftown is the leader of the Cuban Nation. Okay. Why don't you ask Cuban Nation what Clint Halftown is and start following what Cuban Nation says? I don't have the authority. This board because if Clint is going by federally funded, that Clint the... is not Indian. He is not based by anything Indian and should have no rights on Indian land. Indian land does not have federal government. Okay, I'm gonna we're gonna agree to disagree, but we have to move on. Okay. We agree to disagree all the time, Mike, because. Like I said, Clint Halftown does whatever Clint Halftown wants to in this town. But just, this is Seneca Falls, not Halftown. I agree. Let's remember that. I agree. And like I said, either start doing your jobs, or when we start taking it into our own hands to protect our children as citizens and taxpayers, don't get upset. Okay. Thank you. And I'm sorry. So, I have... I'll let you finish what I was doing that. But on the three people that were kidnapped and taken out of state to be judged in another state, what's going to be done about that? So they weren't kidnapped. They were arrested by Cuban Nation police for... Uh, One of them was charges. not on tribal land. He was on state-owned land. He was in the middle of the road when he was arrested. Tribal law does not supersede outside of tribal land. I was told that by several of your lieutenants who spoke to you on the phone when I did a protest at his gas station. And I asked if I stood on the other side of the street and one of them came out and knocked me down and wanted to arrest me, can he legally do it? So Your so lieutenant you, you, said you, you know, told him they cannot arrest somebody off of the reservation land. Senate Falls PD has been present. There are no reservation lands. There is no reservation land. And if, if you go on the idea... Okay, so if there's so no reservation lands, theory would be there's no reservation there's no law what don't you people get you're allowing half town to control the village of seneca falls no, we're not. yes you are if he's working for the federal government he is not an indian indian law states it's by indians look at your traditional law from indians i'm not an indian i'm not native but you know what i get it I get it, but you're putting native children in our schools, but you're telling us we can do nothing about it, quote unquote, because they're native. No, no we're not doing anything about it because they're half town. No, because it's controlled by half town. Okay. You guys are pathetic. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a comment to you what you just said. Because you know what? We just came from the supposedly tribal court, the supposedly man made up tribal court through a man made entity of the half town. We were talking to this judge, and this judge said that is illegal what he's doing because to order, in order for him to have tribal court, tribal 
anything, they have to be First Nations. There's, that is a non-native judge in there dictating and making judgment on our people. Like I said, it's going back to that two, that two role relationship where your people are in our canoe running our vessel. That is not supposed to be happening. Okay, I'm gonna, Stu, I'm, Chief, I'm sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna adapt the canoe for now, okay? This, we, we need to move on, okay? Uh, I suggest strongly that a lot of these arguments that are being made do what I do. I go to the federal government and make appeals. I've taken pictures of what's happened, destruction, houses torn down, high-speed chases, and I sent it to my representative in Washington, whose name is Chuck Schumer, okay? I suggest that everybody does that. It's not a Seneca Falls issue. It's a federal issue. And the other thing I suggest is that the Cuban Nation people somehow broker some peace with each other. This is a civil war going on between the Cuban Nation people. I would suggest that whoever the leadership is, Sam George, he wants no part of it. He wants no part of it. I suggest that there's some negotiations of a peace between your people, okay? I have to move on, I apologize, I thank you for your time. We're gonna move on, okay? On a happy note, uh, at this time, I would like to, uh, I have the great pleasure of uh, recognizing a very dedicated employee to Seneca Falls. And uh, the town board has, uh, Jim provided you with a plaque, which means nothing, I guess, but in the big picture, it's a nice thing, right? Uh, the plaque reads, <laughs> they have one of these, and they threw me out of water a little bit. Uh, on your retirement, presented to James Peterson in sincere appreciation for your dedicated years of service to the town of Santa Claus. May you be proud of the work that you have done and the difference you have made. 33 years of service, appointed July 10th, 1989, you probably don't remember that date. Uh, retired 8-25-2022, uh, Michael Ferrara, town supervisor, town of Santa Claus. Jim, um, you know, it's been uh, a three and a half, three years, or, or almost three years. Uh, you've done nothing but made my job easier, and I appreciate that. And uh, anybody who puts in 33 years of service uh, deserves more than a plaque, but the best I can do is a plaque and some cake. So, <laughs> on behalf of the town board and the people of Seneca Falls, thank you very much. Thank you. And we Executive session while well, people are Kate. If anybody would like to make a motion to go into executive session for personnel reasons, and I want to invite the town manager and the attorney to the town to the meeting, please. Have a Don made the motion, have a second. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Jim, would you like to say a couple words before we leave? Yeah. Yeah. And just like to say that I had a, yeah. had a good run now. 33 years in the town. Um, I work with a great bunch of department heads and town board members, and I really appreciate appreciate everything that everybody's done and the employees that work for the town. They've been very good to me. Uh, I know Jeremy will be coming in in my job next. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um, he's four guys down. He will be four guys down, so you got to give him a little time to get some new employees in here, and uh, he'll do a great job for us. And I would like to thank uh, my family, especially my wife, for all the phone calls that I had two, three o'clock in the morning and woke her up, and me getting up two, three o'clock in the morning to go plow and call, check the roads and everything. I really appreciate everything. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Take in my house because a couple years ago we had two plow trucks go through our front yard. And maybe I had the third one pull the other two out. That was a tunnel. <laughs> that was well, the I'm going to put uh, Jim's phone number on the on the, uh, on the website. <laughs> yes. You can still call him this this winter when yeah. things go bad. Okay, you guys enjoy the day. Jim, thank you. Ian, thank, thank you. you. And we'll be back. That was a fun. Now for a career. Uh, <laughs> Board Member Churchill made a motion to ex uh, exit executive session, seconded by uh, Board Woman Dyson. Who did the motion? Steve Churchill. Okay, uh, kind of a motion to accept the minutes from the special board meeting of July 26. Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. Got a motion to accept the board minutes from the regular board meeting of August 2nd, 2022. Make the motion. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Got a motion to accept the special meeting minutes of August 25th, 2022. I make the motion. Thank you. Second? Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. We have six communications in your packet, minutes from the town planning board, minutes of the zoning board of appeals, uh, condition assessment and report prints for the Van Rensselaer tank, checks and deposits, to deposits totaling $1,148,000, minutes of the Heritage Preservation Commission, and minutes of the zoning board of appeals. There was something in the, uh, in the zoning or the planning board minutes that talked about the cuganation, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Probably because of uh, their application for the growth station yeah. right over here. Yeah. 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 Two things. They want to build a platform. Right. Yeah. They're building a 12,000 or 15,000 square foot building, 26 feet out. Yeah. Okay. There they are. All okay. right. Okay. Oh, business. Uh, good news, but I'll let the attorney for the town, Pat Morrell, Share the good news. Okay, so we had a closing on 60 State Street a couple of weeks ago. So that is uh, that has been transferred. The the uh, I know this has been discussed. But the purchases of the property uh, also on Cafe 19. They intend to turn this into a restaurant of some kind. Um, and judging from Cafe 19, I'm sure it'll be. Uh, very good and very successful. Um, I believe there's a, there will also be some of that New York State DRI funding uh, involved with that project as well. Uh, so that has happened. I've uh, delivered the checks to the town, uh, to our town clerk, and I've asked uh, part of the um, and there's vouchers submitted for some expenses related to that closing uh, to pay some of our uh, some of the vendors involved with that. But otherwise, that will be back on the town's tax rolls shortly. So, that is done. Thanks, Pat. Yep. Thanks Thank for you. putting that check in my banking account. I appreciate yes, it. Sir. <laughs> okay. Uh, under old business uh, resolution uh, in your packet for a comprehensive plan, whereas the town board of Seneca Falls has expressed a desire to update the town's comprehensive planning document whereas MRB group has submitted a proposal for $29,500 to provide administrative services and technical support for the development of this document. Uh, therefore, be it resolved, the town board hereby accept the proposal from MRB and authorize the supervisor to execute the necessary documents to enter the contract for a sum of $29,500. Can I have a motion for that, please? I'll make a motion. And yeah. I have a second. I'll second. Discussion. Yeah, I'd like to discuss it. Um, I don't think now is the right time to do this and the reason being is that I would like to see it done more so you know I guess my question is would it be more appropriate to do it once because we're doing the DRI we're going to be doing a number of of upgrades especially downtown and, and whatnot is now the right time especially with I mean should the combination be a part of I, I there's a variety yeah, of different things going on right I, now I, is now the right time to do it I would suggest I guess is my question if it was directed to me I wrote the resolution I would suggest it exactly for those reasons that now is the time to do it because it's time to convene folks given to the table um, and 
perhaps use this as an opportunity to give voice to people and build community. I mean, that's hopefully how that <coughs> project goes. Um, does that make sense? Do you have the, the funds to do this? Yeah. I mean, I mean yes, we have funds, okay? Uh, but certainly, if you wanted to include it in the uh, 2023 budget, as a line item, you can certainly do that as well. Uh, I think uh, Board Member Churchill is the one who has uh, been emphasizing the importance of a comprehensive plan, and he's 100% right. The, the last one hasn't been done. Uh, actually, it was done when it was a village in a town together type of thing. 16 uh, years ago. Yeah, so uh, certainly part of the whole process. Can I ask what exactly the comprehensive plan is for? I'm sorry? What is exactly the comprehensive plan? Very good question. Uh, the comprehensive plan is kind of like the guiding light for the, the board, the elected board, uh, town board members, okay? And it is the, if it's done correctly, it's the impetus for what happens and how it happens and development and zoning and all different kinds of things that would be included in the comprehensive plan and stakeholders from the community, uh, board members, community members, uh, other people. Uh, it might be a great opportunity to get representation from the Cuban nation, whatever side of the fence the Cuban nation's on type of thing. Uh, but it, it's, it's stakeholders having uh, some, providing some direction on what we want our town to look like moving forward. And how does one get on that? Uh, if approved, then we would be advertising uh, in a public meeting and on a website. Uh, anybody interested in sitting on the comprehensive plan uh, committee, please let us know. Yeah, I mean, another. There'll be a lot of openings. Trust me. <laughs> another avenue, too, is that uh, a, a survey could go out to all the residents of Seneca Falls, soliciting some of their input, answering some questions, and get some guidance. Um, there's no way, I mean, no one up here knows exactly where Seneca Falls wants to go. It's the people of Seneca Falls that determine that collectively. So. That's the other way than what it is right now. <laughs> other discussion? Questions? I would just like to make a comment that I know our town manager is new, but I'm a stickler that I kind of like a title on here so I know where it comes from. Yes, so sir. If it's water and sewer, if it's highway, it's... Really I will blame the town lawyer for the lack of that. <coughs> he should know that. Yeah. He's heard you bring it up. I consulted him with prior to learning this. So I'm going to use a nice template, then you just yes, yes, sir. <laughs> if you want to use my template, I'll use some off. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Opposed. That's carried four to one. Um, I think in my uh, versus coming back with another resolution for a transfer of uh, monies, uh, would anybody oppose that we add this line item into the 2023 budget and get the process started in January? Does that work for everybody? For this. Plan. To budget it for next year, I think. Yeah, the money. Yeah. 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 And we can start. I mean, see that. We can do it now. We can do it now. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I mean, we have the money. You know, you look through our agenda, we're taking so oh, much yeah. money out of okay. contingency. Okay. What's 29000 Okay. We'll get it started. Okay. Very good. Um, have a resolution here with no title on it. <laughs> I have a sense of humor around here, too. You know. uh, whereas federal and state regulations for HRA, COBRA, FMLA, ACA, Medicare Part D, and retiree billing impose requirements upon the town with which the town is required to comply, whereas TASC Corporation. I think the motion go with them, uh, T -A -C. T -A -C. The town manager did get cut the price in half, though. So. And that price is uh, eight thousand six hundred and fifty-five dollars. No, four thousand three fifty. This year. Well, this year. I'm sorry. Right. Right. Yep. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Uh, four thousand three hundred and fifty dollars for this year. Moving forward, it would be eight thousand six hundred. Because so they were trying to charge us from January. Right. And Peter got straight. Now, are you guys straight? Right? <coughs> no, Somebody did. Peter did. If anything good happens, it's Peter. If anything bad no. happens, you. And this is. This is. I've had some questions as, as a. Some of the other board members have from some retirees and such. 
that they have they have a little fear that their, uh, their benefits uh, health benefits may change. This has no impact. On Absolutely not. This it's is, just the administration of reporting. The it's not even administration of the benefits. Okay. <coughs> reporting the federal government and filing the paperwork when employees, you know, right. things that we just do not have the capacity mechanically to do right. properly. Thank you. Okay, so can I have a motion for this resolution? Frank made the motion. Can I have a second? A second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So, Peter, so Peter, you're going to have to put together two resolutions for October to fund both of those. Okay. And uh, Board Member Churchill, just uh, we're working through some of the concerns with the retirees and so forth, and uh, we're trying to make them understand it's different, but. Uh, the bottom line, their premium might be a little bit higher, but their actual out-of-pocket monies will not be higher. And we're, between Sarah and Peter and myself, uh, we were working very closely with the insurance brokers to ensure that nothing bad happens to our retirees. Right, and if there are any changes, it would have to right. come before the retirees. Correct. Okay, uh, new business. Uh, Approval of special events, uh, they're in your packet. Any questions or? There's none. none. They're not in There's our packet. There's none. There's none. There's none. Because they're not in our packet. No. Okay. <laughs> no special events coming up? We've already had all the special events. Huh? Okay. Uh, so we have uh, finally some resolutions uh, proposed local law on signage. Um, again, these have been working on for a better part of three and a half, four months between the uh, zoning planning committee uh, and John's here today, but he from MRB and uh, Frank is here and Dan is here and Pat's here and myself, uh, who all sit on this committee with a few other people, uh, Nikki as well, Peter Priscelli. So uh, these are finally moving to resolutions that we can have public hearings in October uh, to get these part of our uh, zoning requirements. So I have a resolution introducing a proposed local law providing for public hearing section 300-54 signs. Town of Board of Seneca Falls believes that it would be advantageous to town to amend the town code as it relates to signs. Now therefore, so we'll thank you. Can, can, we, second? can we bundle these three together since they're all going to be scheduled for October? Well, there, there's three separate, there's three, there's three separate laws they each have. But uh, this is just a set that... I know, but... I want to keep them separately so that if one thing is challenged, it doesn't affect all three, that they're all independent. If this is just a schedule for October 4th public hearing. Yes, okay. I know. We'll do but it. ultimately, it helps to keep things simple to have them have okay. their own. Yes, can I go to Skyler County? As soon as I get a second in the I'll second. So we have, oh, yeah. we have a motion and a second. Uh, Who made the motion? I, not even really. Right. Board right. member Churchill, I think. Can I second? Okay. Second right. by. Thank you. Right, okay, it. discussion. And Sean is here okay. for any questions. So my first question is, <coughs> the time shall be not located on a public right-of-way. What, what, what is the public right-of-way? What, what's the public right away? Is that the, the distance between, like my mother lives on Ch lived on Chesapeake Scott, but you know the distance between the curb and the sidewalk and the land is from the center line, you know, an hour. Usually, you know, the typical right away is sixty feet. So, you know, where there's sidewalks, utility poles, that's typically considered the right way. So, what about on the Lower Lake Road? My property touches the, uh, so I can't put on an election sign on the Lower Lake Road anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a four, a three rod road, I, I'm going to well, be in the go. right of way. You just answered your own question. Yeah. What's that? You just answered your own <laughs> question. I'll take it. It's a three rod road. <laughs> That's the right of way. It's <laughs> okay. you know, usually about 25 feet. All right. Well, I, I'm, line. I'm not voting for these that. Are th these are things that are resolved <laughs> with a. Yeah, put a sign in my own yard. <laughs> well, you, you, can, yard. you can put it in your yard. You just can't put it in the right of way. can see it. But again, just for the record, this is better. We, we put this back, we delayed it and delayed it, so everybody had a chance to chime in and make comments. One person did. That's it. One board member made comments. So we just got this. No. 
No, we can't. I went, what, what, who was I going to make comments? I went to the meeting and made comments about it. You were at the meeting? He was. What meeting? That meeting. <laughs> the meeting that you guys had with Chuck. Yeah, I'm sorry. Last meeting. I was there. I was on the phone. Wait. Yeah. I'm talking about the planning committee. So, did you bring, for me. I was there. Did you bring this up at that meeting? I brought up a number of things. That's why they're all in pink. Yeah. That's not the same one you bring it up. Why do we always get this discussion? You're the hero because you make all the meetings. Some of us don't make it. We have questions tonight. We're totally within our right to ask questions. Absolutely. Anytime until it's passed. Hey, well, Frank, you have some questions? And then he's answering them. Well, you're jumping all over Frank. We want the meeting. I'll come in and go to the meeting. I've been through this for three and a half months. I only got input from one person. That's it. Come on. You always do that. He has all the right. He's a board member. He's yes. asking a question. Okay. Okay. If I got 20 questions that I want to ask next month, I have the right to do that. So stop. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. What about so, Frank, I have, I, uh, uh, so I have a question. <laughs> this is the 100th anniversary of the Three Stooges, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know I have a question. Yeah. Yes. So, all right, I want to be sure that I'm not infringing on uh, freedom of speech. So, flags, particularly flags. Can you talk to me about the flags and if there were any changes to the flags? So, political flags in particular, how are those going to be affected within this? So, there's a long list of exemptions. Other um, exemptions. In these. Okay, so, take a look through there and mm -hmm. on the exemptions. There is specifically, so it is, it's up at the beginning, so it's, okay, so right after the definitions, the definitions are in section A, section B are exemptions. Yep. So, okay, uh, so right there, uh, first is historical markers, two, flags and insignia of any government. Um, and then there's directional signs, not illuminating signs, and I wanted to go down to number 11 yep. because this incorporates specifically the comments that you had about the number and, and size. Just a uh, command player uh, number 11 too, by the way, just so you know. I'm sorry? There's a grammatical error in 11 that I noted. But oh, okay. Just well, so actually, yeah, oh, okay. I did try to clean this up a bit, but the, the main point of it is that exemption formerly was just in the residential area. Mm -hmm. Now, so we incorporated your recommendations on the number and size of signs. Right. And just said, everybody across the town, residential, commercial, industrial, any particular parcel, here's the size. There are, you know, two signs, 12 square feet. Everybody gets to uh, speak their mind by way of a sign with that. And that's so that's an exemption across the board okay. for everybody. It's not limited by the particular zone where it happens to be in. But otherwise, governmental flags are otherwise exempt as well. But I just wanted to point that out. Very good. That relates to the, Thank you. the recommendations that you made. Folks, so can, can you fly the Buffalo Bill flag in your lawn or not? Sure, you can. Oh, you can. And that's not represent the country. Under, that's under, well, it's under 12 square feet. That's, under 12, for three by four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And otherwise, on the right of way, if we wrote it to say signage, you know, feel free to put your signs in the right of way, that would be kind of ridiculous because our, our highway department would have the right to go and tear them down. Anyway, same reason you don't put a shed in the right of way. Same reason that's you don't that. put no, that's that's, else that's right. right. And, okay. and when I was on the zoning board, we stopped the person from built the, the garage got knocked down by a tree, yep. and we made them put it behind the right away on the lower lake road. Not even with all the other properties, but it's the only one that jags because we made them. Yes, it was kind of pulled back. But yep. for signs, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I'm sorry, in the right away, that's ridiculous. Oh, and so Don't all these signs that are around the Baird Street for election signs, all these signs of lawnmower people, who's, who's going to pick them all up out of the right of way every day? 
The same people that do it on a regular basis. Yeah. I, 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 I will have to get you our, a pickup truck. Our, 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 our budget. Our budget department has the authority to clear the right of way at any time. They have a pickup truck. <laughs> With an eight foot bed. <laughs> so, Kevin, <Okay, laughs> so, okay, we got, I got your, you know, your email with these attachments for the new code, and it said that essentially yeah, roll back. No, the majority of it remains the same. Yeah. It's the code that's in place now so, with a few changes. Yeah. yeah. Is there any reason we just can't add those changes as amendments? Um, well, we kind of are. There's only a handful of them, right? Well, that's those those amendments are amendments from the prior versions of that we have been working on. So there there might be some changes uh, from what's in the code right now. So I it is it's easier to, to pull out the whole it kind of is, but if you go with amendments, if you because we've been going around on this. Thanks for, for months, mm -hmm. yeah. and I don't want to miss any of the changes from what is in the code now. I'd rather just pull the whole thing out. But we may want to because it all relates back to itself. But there may be some verbiage that we don't care for as a board, and I guess we could pull it out at that. Yes. I mean, amend it to have something. Feel free. Feel free to send me an email, you know. Uh, well, the board would have to decide. Yeah. Well, the board's going to have to decide oh. next month. So you can make some changes between now and then. All right. One, so, one, one, one more question. What's the definition of public property? Uh, town owned property, like the, the town building or the community center or events park, the bridges. State land, too? It's territory. I don't, uh, well, we don't territory. have any jurisdiction over state land. Yeah. What is the propensity, well, I, mean, I guess the, the potential for, as far as the enforcement and, you know, when it comes to freedom of speech, particularly? Um, yeah, and well, like, that When it comes that to this local law, that, I mean, what, for, for any potential for issues that's going to cause for the for the town? That exemption like, the is, the exemption they talked about being, having it apply across the board is really for that purpose, to ensure that, that it is, uh, that everybody is allowed to say whatever they wish um, and that we're not restricting people from having the ability to do so. However, we also don't want the entire community clogged up with signs and right. it's distracting. And Am I allowed to ask a question? Absolutely. How, how do you know on what road how far are you allowed to go? Are we going to have like a town map that says my house, I can have my sign five feet into my yard and the next street to be? I don't know. Pat can probably answer, but the, the, the town right away is from the street. I think, I don't know, Pat. About 25, 25 feet. feet. Uh, How much? From the center line? 25 feet. So from the center line, line to 25 feet into my property, I can't have a sign. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So instead of having the highway department run around and pick them up and throw them away, would they just maybe pick them up and go, okay, it's like five more feet this way? Because I'm just thinking like, you know, with the, we started the tradition with the senior banners in the yards, you just learn to throw those all away, like if they're put in the wrong spot, like, I don't know. I mean, it's just, I don't know what the rules are, because some are in state, some are different places. It's just, a lot of things are spirit of the law, you know what I'm saying? So it's not necessarily, there's gonna be the, uh, you know, the, the, the great throw away of sign. The suit Nazi going around checking, making okay. sure it's exactly 25 feet. You know? So is it 25 feet the norm for everybody? Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought I heard you say that different shoots had different amounts, but I said, how did you make it? Yeah, okay. The biggest problem I have with this code, with this general, or this law in general, is that uh, I think it, it was born out of the desire to try to address some of the profanity mm -hmm. that some people. Uh, consider profanity and, and signs within the town and it falls short of doing it um, but it does other things that I never really noticed were problems so in many ways I'm thinking hey, you know we really don't need this it's not getting the problem it's not going to solve the problem that everybody's trying to get at and that's freedom of speech there's other ways to do that but this isn't going to do that and uh, we're just putting making things more restrictive when we don't really have a problem to start with. I think the sign issue is is people put signs out, they get picked up. I've never noticed clutter. I don't notice them in the streets. Um, 
it's a non-issue. I don't think we even need to consider it. So we can have the public hearing, but I am not going to vote for a change in the, in the, in the code so next month. We do have an issue with the political signage with vulgarity or profanity. Um, a lot of people call, and I beg them to file a complaint or email. But what can you do about it? Nothing. That's, that's, the, that's the point of injury. restricting the number of size. Well, but so you can't have a sign. It just this all this does is restrict where, where they property. can be put. Now I haven't noticed a whole lot of them right out by the road. There's a few, um, but uh, to be honest with you, the people that put them out by the road, you probably aren't going to stop them if you take away the one they put out by the road. There's going to be another one there the next day. Okay. It's just not going to solve that problem. People that want to be profane um, are going to be profane. They're going to find another way. They're going to put flags up. They're going to have to do it on a smaller scale. That's the point. Okay. Their sign's not going to be to cover their well, entire garage or their entire store. Then if it's a smaller scale, then all we need, need to do is amend our existing code and not, not, not have this big. Right. We can, uh, we can, you can uh, when it comes to the public hearing, we'll hear, take comments from the public, and then you'll have the opportunity to vote. Uh, obviously, this is just a resolution to have the public hearing in that vote. Correct. Any further discussion? Oh. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? I'm sorry? Aye. Said aye. Okay. So carry. Uh, I'm in favor of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I didn't hear, didn't hear you. I can't hear. We're not done yet. Okay. All right. So. Uh, What's next on the agenda? Is there another resolution for short term rentals? Short term rentals. Okay. So I have a resolution here introducing. Oh, oh, can I ask you to hold on for a second? Absolutely. Okay. So along with everything that's there there's a there's seeker um a seeker review form the short it's called the short environmental assessment form and then the last page of that packet is a uh, is another resolution for attempt for this board to act as the lead agency it should be the last page of the, of the packet that's there this packet here yep right here yep. the very last page of it that's my last page. Here. You So it's a, a secret lead agency resolution for this board to designate itself as a lead agency to uh, for the state environmental quality review. I make a motion that we uh, designate the town of Thunder Falls for the uh, lead agency for the secret review. A second. I, oh. Thank you, but uh, I think we need to do the resolution first for the proposed local law public hearing, or we don't have to do that. I thought you did that. I thought you had done that. This is the intent. We're not declaring the agency, we're just declaring intent, and then we sign part, uh, part one of the uh, that's, that's yeah. all. Okay. We voted on having the proposed local law for the short term, and we did? Yeah. No. 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 We're back on That's what I'm saying. We're back on signs. We're back on signs. Oh, we're back on the signs. Yes. That's why I was interrupting. I'm sorry. I probably had that in my packet. I apologize. Now I got it. 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 There it is. Right there. You made your bet. Okay. So we have a motion. To uh, uh, have the second call the town board of the lead agency, we got a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 I have a resolution here introducing proposed local law and providing for public hearing section 345A short term rentals. Whereas the town board of the town of Seneca Falls believe that it would be advantageous for the town to amend the town code to address short term rentals. Uh, now, therefore, it be resolved the proposed local law number whatever of the year. Local law to amend chapter 300 of the Seneca Falls Town Code to add section 300 45A short term rentals be in the same for the town of Seneca Falls. Uh, be it further resolved that the town board will hold a public hearing on said proposed local law at 6 p.m. October 4th, 2022. So moved. Second. Moved. Second. Second. Questions or discussions? We haven't set any fees at this time, correct? Any fees? Yeah, yeah when you read the law, the, yeah. the, uh, the town has the option of setting. A permit fee and a uh, inspection fee and things like that. We are, we're not we doing that, that right no. now. No. no. Okay. I'm good. Just, uh, I think the county does it. Did the county do something already? Uh, no. We no. Yeah. No. Only the town of Fayette, as far as yeah. I know, right mm -hmm. now charges a, a 
permit pending yet. At the reorganizational <coughs> meeting each January, you, you typically have a list of fees for lots of different things. This would be one of those. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Before you go to the next one, <laughs> in the middle of the room. Okay. In the, short, in the short term rental. That comes short term rental. It's four pages in. There's a secret. There's a secret resolution. I make the same motion that I made for the last one that the town be designated the uh, seeker review for this uh, local law. Second for that, please. Second. Any questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So let me guess, there's probably a secret resolution in the middle of this one someplace. No, 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 for each one. Yeah, and yeah, actually this one is the last page. Okay. Is that in the last page? Of this one? All right, I have a resolution here introducing proposed local law and providing for public hearing chapter 300 title 16 anaerobic digester facilities, where the town of Board of Senate calls believes that it would be advantageous to the town code to address anaerobic digester facilities. Uh, to be further resolved, the town board will hold a public hearing on said proposal law at 6 p.m. October 4, 2022. Anyone want to jump in? I make a motion. Thank I'll you. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. I make uh, a motion that we designate ourselves as the, the town center for the board as the lead agency and speaker. That's a very good motion. Right? Got a motion in a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, let me go back a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> we have, uh, everybody received their uh, department updates uh, from our people, from MRV, from B&L, uh, Leeson's here, Sean's here, all of your department chair people are here. Uh, are there any questions on the reports that you received? I hope hey, you. Yeah, I have a question. Yep. On the uh, water plant treatment of 24 million, we're still going to be able to have water, right? This is not going to impede. We're not closing the water plant. <laughs> the water is good. Everything is good, right? Even though it's 40 years old, people shouldn't be panicking. Everything is good, right? Correct. Everything yes. is good. And it's not all 40 years old, correct? I mean, one of the things that surprised me was. I thought we went to UV a few years back, and now the recommendation was to go to chlorine. And I thought chlorine's passe. We're using both. What's that? We're using both. No, but in the in the new build out, it would say to scrap the UV and go to chlorine for the set. That is one of the recommendations. One of the recommendations. For disinfection. Like, yes. We're going full circle, right? I thought UV replaced a lot of that. That's what the engineers are recommendation. Well, but, but if we could use our UV equipment, that's kind of my point. I mean, none of this stuff's cheap. Uh, no. And I just more expensive. I'm just curious why we're going back to chlorine when. And these improvements listed on the statute, I provided you were the all in improvements, so this was if you were to do everything. The engineering report shows different alternatives um, and so forth. We just <coughs> wanted to submit this via application for this all in number, should we choose to do that. I get that, but it kind of make it, it makes you wonder. I mean, UV is newer technology than chlorine, correct? You still need chlorine after UV, because you yes. have to be able to measure something. <coughs> okay. UV doesn't need everything. But this was specifically said that out with the UV, back with the chlorine, and it, it just was confusing. And I was just it, it brings the, th the thought to me that there might be other things in there that are equally. It's like, are we really getting rid of technology that we... So I'm assuming there's data that supports that chlorine is more effective than UV. There would be in the engineering report, yes. Okay. I can definitely review that and extract it for you and follow up with that as well. If you want more information on that. Right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it sounds like the it's not even going to happen until 2026, correct? That's the inflation. Yeah, that's the... I'll be long gone. I'll be sitting out there in 2026. <laughs> I'm okay. sitting here. Yeah, but I can definitely provide that. There is, there is backup for the reasons that we provided the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, I make a motion on the, uh, if we're there, 
Well, we were at uh, order after a public hearing authorized an increase in improvement of facilities of the town of Seneca Falls water treatment plant under town law 20 B. I make a motion. We uh, and I have a second for that. Second. Okay, again, this is just so we can apply for the grant. That's all of the right. We are not making any decisions about chlorine or UV or what repairs are going to be done, how we're going to how we're going to fix it, and so forth. Uh, the next resolution is a bond resolution. Again, it's a requirement for us to go through and make the application with Leah. Basically, it, it will, it'll tell us that you know if we had a bond, the whole thing. This is uh, the setup to do that. Okay. So, Mike, before you act on the bond uh, resolution, yep. in your in your pile, there's resolution <coughs> like this. So there's that order. Yep. And then there's this is a secret resolution. Right. Yep. yep, okay, so that, that needs a, a separate. I'll have Frank do that. He does a good job on that. Yep, there you go. Okay, all in favor of the uh, resolution, we have a, sec a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. Frank? Can yeah. I make a motion that the uh, town of Seneca Falls designate themselves as the lead agency for this type 2 act? A second. Right? Type 2, right? Yep, it is. Okay. Uh, and Nikki, you're gonna go back through these because then mm -hmm. you've got to certify them, and right. they have to go back to Lisa. Okay. Okay. Uh, you got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Next up is a bond resolution. Uh, the town of Seneca Falls, Seneca County, <coughs> adopted on September 6, authorizing the construction of improvements to the Seneca Falls water treatment plant. Estimated cost of 24.1 million dollars. <coughs> appropriating set amount for the bond anticipation notes and serial bonds of the town. Have a motion for this, please. Make a motion that we adopt the. Uh, Thank you. Have a second. second. Thank you. And again, there is no obligation or commitment on the part of the town to move forward with any of the spent dollars. Correct. Correct. That's correct. Okay. For the record. For the record. Because I I don't know if I want to have my name hanging on. No, nope, for the record, absolutely not. Again, it's all for the grant purpose. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. <coughs> Judge Kelly, I hereby tender my resignation as court clerk to the town justice for the town of Sunny Falls. My last day of work will be August 12th. I have a motion to accept uh, Lisa Hockadell's resignation motion. Second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. <coughs> aye. Anybody opposed? Uh, on behalf of the town board, I'd like to wish uh, Lisa the best of luck. Um, and thank you for her uh, short stint with the town. What are they a very good position? I'm sorry? What are they going to do with that <coughs> vacant position? So are we filling that? Know. or Tell me that. There's discussion right now as to what we're going to be looking to do. Well, I spoke with the judges actually this morning. Um, when we talk about the budget, we'll talk. Oh, about we'll talk about the budget. Okay, very good. Okay. Uh, I have a letter of resignation here from uh, Patrolman Jacob Dechik. Uh, Dear Chief Pinstra, after much consideration, I'm informed you that I have accepted a position of County Police Officer with the Ontario County Police or Sheriff Office. I'm sorry, we're going to go to lateral transfer to their agency. Please consider my last day of employment on August 21st. I make a motion we accept the uh, resignation with regret. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, anybody opposed? Again, I want to thank uh, Jacob for his time of service to the town of Seneca Falls, and we wish him the best of luck. I have a resolution here to appoint Jeremy Wen as an interim highway superintendent for the town of Seneca Falls Highway Department. Uh, whereas the Town Highway Department <laughs> retired on August 25th, whereas the interim appointment will commence on September 7th and will be will conclude on December 31st, 2023, whereas Mr. Wendt will serve as the will of the Seneca Falls Town Board may be terminated as the interim high school superintendent by the board, whereas Mr. Wendt's immediate supervisor will be the town manager. Uh, the possible termination is that interim highway superintendent would not result in the termination of Mr. Wendt from his civil service appointment. Mr. Wendt will be paid a stipend of twelve thousand dollars, prorated for twenty twenty two, and the full amount for twenty twenty three, in addition to his hourly rate uh, for twenty twenty two. I make a motion that we appoint Jeremy Wendt as the interim 
I'll second. I will superintend. Any questions or discussion? Uh, Jeremy comes to us with the recommendation of uh, Mr. Peterson. Uh, Jeremy is, uh, and I and uh, the town manager have had some discussions. I feel very confident that Jeremy is going to uh, pick it up. We have, uh, as Jim mentioned, we have some vacancies there that we're working on that we have to get filled, uh, which is not going to be easy, but we're going to be trying very hard to get some people in here. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Jeremy, congratulations, <laughs> and we wish you the best of luck. Okay? Uh, can I have a motion to uh, release the funds to its Wonderful Life Museum and be appropriated in 2022 budget? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, I believe it's $7,000 that was in the budget. Yes. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. Uh, I have a motion here. The town board has expressed a desire to update the town of Seneca Falls employee handbook. handbook to modify the vehicle usage policy, uh, whereas paragraph two of the current policy reads, town vehicles must be assigned to specific town officials and employees for specific purposes and tasks, except for the superintendent of highways, said vehicles may not be used for an unauthorized purpose, nor to conduct personal, private, or non-town related businesses. The superintendent of highways is permitted to unrestricted usage for the assigned vehicle. However, all town related travel shall be tracked and reported for the IRS. Therefore, it resolved that the town board hereby accepts the proposal to change section 507, paragraph 2. I'll make a motion. motion for that. Thank you. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. I have a resolution here whereas the town is slated to receive funds from the state for the DRI project, uh, whereas the town has allocated the DRI funds to projects and bills are starting to come in. Therefore, be it resolved that the Seneca Falls Town Board hereby authorize the creation of a DRI capital fund and authorize a budget modification to transfer $10,000 from the contingency fund A1990.400 to the capital project fund H48997.200 to cover the initial cost. And second for that, please. Thank you. Uh, again, this relates to the three public projects for the DRI, uh, the Seneca Falls Community Center, the uh, Visitor Center, and the north side of the canal work. Uh, MRB is the, we appointed MRB as the administrator of that grant. There are some small uh, administration fees at the moment, and that's, we have no, no legal budget item to do that. Uh, Sarah, uh, working with the auditors, has set up a, a reserve fund for that to happen. Uh, I don't foresee a lot of charges coming through. Um, we'll be signing a contract here, one of the resolutions tonight, and uh, those projects are gonna get started here pretty quick. You say, when do you foresee the money coming through? Uh, from everything I understand, when you, after phase one of construction, money starts coming. Oh, your way. Okay. okay. So you spend it first and then get it later? Correct. Got it, okay. And if it's the not public ones, they have to spend it all, they have to come up with the money all up front before the state reimburses them. So if you get a million dollar DR, DRI grant, you got to front the million dollars. Yeah. You say we, the MRB, did this board point MRB as the administrator of the DRI yeah. project? When did we they appointed MR, MR, we appointed the MRB as the administrator of the grant. Okay. All right. I have another question on this. The contingency fund, A1990.400, how much is in that contingency fund? We don't, uh, we don't know at the moment, okay? Well, do we know we have any money? Yeah. We are, there's money there, but we're, we're working because at Because I thought in the January meeting, essentially that's landfill money, correct? Well, the contingency fund was budgeted for. So every year we budget for contingency. But we had this big pot of landfill money January 1st. Yeah, that was landfill. 1.9 million dollars. That was all appropriated 
the fourth quarter of annual revenue was for last year. Yes, that was no, that was two million. It was one point nine million dollars, not the fourth quarter. One point nine million dollars, which would have been the approximate balance of the landfill's contribution to this town this year of the three million, um, and it was all appropriate. It was all allocated, um, and so I'm just wondering where 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 this money comes from. If that was all appropriated to other funds. One million going to drainage, the drainage fund. The contingency is separated from that. So this this contingency is the contingency that was budgeted for in the A fund from last and year. And we, we don't have any idea how much is in it. I don't want to speak, so no, I don't know exactly how much is left in there right now. But it was two hundred thousand. We budgeted two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Because we, we dip into it quite a bit, we do. and um, it'd be nice to know as we're going, you know where we are. We're September now. <coughs> you see that a 1990 400 a lot. Would you be able to give a number for the the October meeting? I'm not going to guarantee that. I'm still oh, working okay. on the books and just trying to straighten out some oh, of the okay. things. All right. So because here's fun. another ten thousand out of that fund, and here's another twenty two thousand out of that fund. All right, that we're going to be. Taken and we don't even know how much money is in it. Thank you. <coughs> well, we know we started with 200. Well, <laughs> I don't think we've expanded $200,000. And we've, we've gone in for different things, but I don't think we've done that. But well, there's, there's 42 to know. Yeah, no, no, you're right. I'm, As I'm a taxpayer, how do we not know? three pages. I mean, I'm a bookkeeper and I have to balance my books monthly. How do we not know what is in each account? Uh, it's a little bit complicated. Uh, so the, we've been trying to go back and balance the books from January of this year, but there was uh, some mistakes made at the end of 2022. Oh, I'm sorry, 2021. So to rectify January of 2022, you got to make sure that 2021 has been completely reconciled correctly. So there were some misentries and so forth. So we're working on reconciling. Nine months later. I mean, I, I could run my business nine months later and not have a balanced book. I, I hear you. Glad we didn't have landfill have not a balanced book. Yep. So. Yeah. I hear That's you. a little nerve wracking for a taxpayer who doesn't come here very often to hear that you have no idea how much money is in one bank account. <clears throat> I hear you. I'm working on it. Uh, I'll probably be coming to the board at some point and may have to go to a plan B. Okay, okay so who is in charge of balancing the uh, Ultimately, I'm the chief financial officer of the, of the town, so do you um, need some help? it's my fault. No, honestly, do you need some help balancing the books? I'm very good at balancing books, so okay. I'd be happy to lend my services. Thank you. Uh, we didn't vote on where were we? Oh, on the moving the funds over, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Opposed. Opposed. I'm sorry, Don. Aye. Aye. Caitlin. Aye. Aye. Mr. Curie, four to one. Board member Churchill voted one. Uh, resolution to transfer ten thousand dollars from the contingency budget. Uh, where is the H four eight nine nine point two R reserve fund? I did this earlier. Maybe it was cemetery. It was cemetery. No, there's three of these capital. Yeah. Uh, resolution to transfer twenty two thousand from the contingency budget to the cemetery fund. Whereas twenty two thousand was allocated for the cemetery fund for repairs to the mausoleum. Uh, whereas the repair project did not get completed in twenty twenty one, the funds were returned to the general fund. And they were not allocated in 2022. Uh, now, therefore, it resolved the town board of Seneca Falls approved the transfer of 22,000 to the cemetery fund from A1990. Can we have a motion for that, please? I make a motion to transfer the 22. Thank you. Again, it's just uh, reallocated the money uh, in the previous year. The work didn't get done uh, when the new budget was created in 2022. It was not added back in there. So it's just a matter of uh, the work's being done and it has to be uh, taken care of. Any questions? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. 
Aye. Anybody opposed? Yeah, I would like to also mention that we approved a $29,000 expenditure out of contingency earlier. So 30, <coughs> we're up to about $75,000 of that 200K in this one meeting. Yeah, we wouldn't be spending all $29,000, or maybe none of it this year, Steve. Uh, I, I'm just saying, we I'm just, I'm just, allocated it out of the, take it out of the contingency, transfer it for that purpose. But, but I'm just expressing to you for that particular project, we would not be spending that much money this year. We'll find other places to spend. Well, it might be, just not on that. Okay, have a resolution to authorize the town supervisor to sign a contract with Avella to complete engineering and design work for the three public works projects funded by the downtown revitalization grant. Uh, the the town of Falls was awarded three DRI grants, Heritage Visitor Center, Community Recreation Center, and North Canal Site Enhancements. Uh, we're asked request for proposals or solicited for design. Uh, committee including Greg Zeller, Joel Marty Karsten, and my town supervisor reviewed, whereas the committee utilizing a rating sheet recommended to the Department of State that scored based on the experience, scope, timeline, fees, relevant projects, familiarity with state requirements, client references, and knowledge of local construction, uh, whereas the committee's evaluation were also reviewed and approved by the Department of State, uh, whereas the three projects will be considered as separate projects, 57,000 for the Heritage Visitor Center, 46 nine uh, for the, uh, that's wrong, but anyway, it's, uh, yeah, it's, that number's wrong. 345. Uh, well. Okay, so the, the uh, North Side Canal is $3.45 million. I apologize, there should have been a comment there. $3,450,000. Uh, resolve, yeah. resolve that the town board of Seneca Falls authorize the town supervisor to sign a contract with Lovella for construction management and design. Uh, for a total of 448000 plus an additional 100000 depending on the New York State electric and gas design costs. Uh, can I have a motion for this, please? I'll make, I'll make a motion. Then. Second, please. Second. Thank you. Who, who are the other... Uh, normally, uh, we would, at the board, I would think, if we're going to spend a half million dollars here, we would see who the other um, folks that, that submitted a, a proposal uh, rather than just LaBella? Uh, off the top of my head, the MRB submitted a proposal. Um, there was three other ones. Melissa, do you remember what the other three were by any chance? I'm sorry? What the other three uh, had an RFP for the uh, construction design. Oh, gosh. LaBella, uh, Bergman. Which other one? Bergman. Yeah, Bergman, Bergman somebody. And I have the our, I have their proposals. Do we, do we know what their uh, what their estimates were cost wise? Labella was the the lowest of all of them. Plus, it has the most experience. All right. I mean, that like MRV was nine hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. That would have been good to, to know that they were the lowest in here. Okay. Well, as I said, I, I put the criteria in there that the state has. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's many factors. You don't have to take the lowest bidder because no. again, it's a professional service, but uh, the state has approved. Uh, they reviewed all of the RFPs and they also approved with Lavella. Okay. Uh, I don't work for the state. Just saying. <coughs> I work for the town, so I like to see. That's why I'm, I'm asking. I, I would look, if there was somebody that was lower, I'd be questioning. <coughs> Since he's added the lowest, I don't have any problem. Oh, that's a lot of money. Have a, any further discussion? Again, this money is part of the DRI grant. This is all part of the total. We'll pay it for them out of the, that money. Correct. This is not coming out of town, town cash payers. Uh, any further questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Period. I have a resolution here scheduling a public hearing in connection with the application to the New York State Office of Community Renewal for CB, CDBG Economic Development Grant. Uh, the Town Center of Falls Center County supports the submission of a consolidated funding application uh, for uh, 
Microenterprise Assistance Program, uh, a grant of $200,000, $210,000. Uh, we're at the New York State Office of Community Renewal soliciting applications. We're at the Town of Seneca Falls and recognize the Downtown Revitalization Initiative Community in 2019, et cetera, et cetera. Be a further resolved that a public hearing be held on October 4th at 6 o'clock. Thank you. Have a second, please. Second. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, looking to get some grant money to help uh, start a program to um, revitalize downtown. Uh, it would provide uh, individuals uh, capital to open a business. Uh, to buy different uh, equipment, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's an attempt to try to fill some of the empty storefronts up and down Wall Street. And uh, MRB is doing this grant with this permission here. Uh, so hopefully we'll put ourselves in a position. Uh, being a DR, DRI recipient, uh, a lot of it is a major factor because the state likes to build on their investment and this is another way they can expand on their investment in the town of Seneca Falls. See, typically CDPG grants are also available through the county. Um, they are. They have access to that money and will. They are. And that can go a long way to helping uh, small businesses. Any further questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. Uh, Tom Clark Greer, this is another one that has to be signed and certified. Mm -hmm. This one goes back to Rhonda. Resolution here to authorize the town supervisor to sign a contract uh, with uh, Core in Maine LP from Binghamton, New York. Uh, whereas the town of Seneca Falls solicited for bidders to replace all water meters with radio transmitter and installation labor, including reading network and software. Uh, whereas there was one loan bidder for the project. Uh, whereas the loan bidder was reviewed and approved by engineers and the grant administrators from the MRB group. Uh, whereas the single bid from Core Maine was two million Two hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars, and seven hundred, whatever. Uh, the town has received the Green Innovative Innovation Grant Program of one million two hundred eighty-five dollars, two hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. Thank you. Uh, have a second for that. I make a motion that we uh, get these water meters done. It may not even cost the whole two million, right, Joe? Um, well, we got a we got a motion. I need a second. Oh. Second. Okay. So yeah, it, it's going to cost. Uh, that's the bid. That, that's the bid. Oh, that's the bid. Okay, that's okay. the that's the two twenty two thousand and twenty two bid. Two million two hundred thousand dollars. Oh. Okay. Uh, the grant we received uh, is obviously one million two hundred eighty five thousand. Uh, what we'll have to decide is that uh, are we going to fund the rest of the project? So uh, I'll need some direction if we're going to do this correctly. Uh, if we don't cough up $900,000, the project will not be completed and we'll have to pick and choose where new things happen in the water meters, okay? Uh, that wouldn't be my recommendation. Uh, I would like to budget for this in the 2020 budget with 2023 budget. Uh, we can allocate, uh, we can allocate landfill revenue. We can allocate, uh, we have ARPA money, uh, about $800,000 in ARPA money. Uh, could be applied to this as well. Shouldn't we decide that? I mean, it's, it's the whole package. I mean, we can't, I think it's it's certainly not prudent to uh, to sign a contract to spend $2.3 million uh, when we only have $1.2 million in hand. Right. Um, and you're 100% right, there may be other revenue, uh, sources of revenue, but they should be determined before this resolution is in front of us. Well, again, if you see at the bottom of the resolution, uh, that the town board of Santa Claus authorized the town supervised contract with core uh, made for the water meter replacement project with the understanding the scope of the project may be reduced depending on town resources. Okay. Well, then I think we need to understand the reduction too. I mean, what does that mean to reduce? I mean, are we going to, some people aren't going to get a new meter, some yeah, people are. That's a, that's a reduction. How do we decide that? You can't change the product. Uh, so, now so now we're going to have this uh, this uh, dual system out there that uh, right, which would be a nightmare for, for the absolutely. Well, for I mean, the village, village of Waterloo, Waterloo, town of Waterloo, village of Waterloo actually went through that for a long time. They had an yeah. old uh, legacy system that they limped along. They got new stuff out there. Um, I think it makes the job twice as hard. So again, I think until we know 
what this entire project, how it, the entire project is going to be funded, I don't think we should take action on this tonight. Okay. But, but that's uh, just that's just my right. my opinion. That there's been a first and a second. Uh, I'm not we'll, gonna... we'll come up with some. Uh, I, I can give you some suggestions. Uh, by authorizing to sign the contract, at least we'd like to get the project started as soon as possible. Uh, and I as I said, my suggestion would be we have ARPA money. Uh, we also have, uh, we, can, we can allocate uh, projected revenue from the landfill uh, into this project. Uh, so there's two major ways that, we, that can be funded How much uh, that will not have an impact have? on the taxpayers. Like how much ARPA money do we have? Don't quote me exactly, but I think eight hundred thousand, maybe something like that. Is there a reason why you don't put it out for rebid if there was only one bid? Uh, the the reason is is that the water meter specifications mm -hmm. are uh, a, a meter that's called census. Mm -hmm. uh, so the town of Seneca Falls has uh, many of I don't want to use the word many, but we have census water meters every time the water department replaces the water meter it's being replaced with a census meter so, so it's for me the only person that can supply that water meter correct so they're this the, the only, this the only, they're the only suppliers so they have a monopoly on the money spent. on the census on the census meter so they're charging 2.2 million dollars because they can because you don't have any place else for them to go well that's, so that's one way to look at it but i don't think that this, this is replacement of all the water meters. This is uh, this covers the installation of them by a contractor. This is software uh, for the meters. This is radio transmission. This eliminates uh, somebody from the water department going from house to house reading meters. It's all done electronically now. So, so the original estimate back in uh, two years ago or two and a half years ago was in the 1.7, 1.5, I can't remember exactly, but unfortunately with COVID and My inflation. Can you interrupt for a second? Yep. If you remember, we did uh, get some preliminary numbers from some other vendors. We did. Yep. So they don't, they don't know that. Yep. Yeah, we, when we, this first started with the previous board, we had met with three different three ones together. Yeah. And the initial cost that they have, uh, the census ones were the, the the agreement at the time, uh, Councilman Avery was, uh, Board Member Avery was on that committee as well. Uh, and census was the agreement. And they were, I think, the lowest of at the time of those three. So right. basically, we were, we, have to we were only going to have to change all of the meters. We were only going to have to change, say, 60%. So putting it up to bid really didn't do anything because if you're having to go from a specific vendor, <coughs> well, whatever price they we're obligated, we're obligated by law to put it out to bid. We're obligated by uh, the government <laughs> who has provided us with a $1.2 million grant to put it out to bid. But if, if we didn't go with a census water meter, it would even be more expensive because every single water meter would have to be changed out. John, do you have an estimate of how many? Sorry, I don't know number better, but. Do you have an idea, sir? It was about um, 60, 40, so. How many? It was about 60, 40 for Neptune and census, so it was more logical to go with census because but do you have any idea how many census ones were in place already? Newer ones? 60%? 60%. No? 60%. Right. And 60%. The, 40, the 40 percent of the Neptunes would have been too old and all the yeah. in place. Do we know how much this system is going to cost going forward? I mean, when you talk about electronic and computers and software, there's maintenance, and maintenance can be um, quite pricey. So what will this cost us on a go-forward basis? I have no idea. Yeah, this to me is incomplete information, so I, I really can't support it tonight. What, what, uh, uh, how good is her proposal? How long is her proposal good? I don't know that either. I think it was good for 30 days, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, again, we this has been something that we've been I know it's been working in the works for all the information we two need years. Is in here. So this I is going to cost us probably, uh, I'll bet the software cost you. Anywhere from two hundred fifty to five hundred thousand dollars a year for maintenance. For maintenance? How much does the software cost? We don't have any. This project, we don't have any software in place right now that costs us anything. What's what, what, what's, what's the support? What's, what, what, what's the breakdown of the two point three million dollars? There's got to be software involved here, correct? 
Software comes with the baggage, correct. But and radio they, transmitters. So what they do typically is charge you at least 20% of the list price of the software that they use. Mm -hmm. It's always proprietary. It's like the CAD system, Spillman. It costs the county probably a million bucks a year just for maintenance, software support and maintenance. So our, our current software is from who, Sarah? Uh, diversified and it, that pairs with the right. next project. So we, we pay a, we pay something for that annual, like an annual licensee fee? Yes. That's a few thousand dollars? Yes. Yeah. And that ties into, so we got the software this year so that we could learn how to use the software so that when the meters get put in, that would be the next step to go forward to start reading the meters. So Just like all police, together. police department has software. Yeah, absolutely. Vicki's office has software. It's all part of it. Is there some type of figure out there as far as what we're going to recoup out of this. So you buy a set of windows, they tell you it's going to pay for itself in three years because it's so much more efficient. Is there a number that's going to start eating into this $900,000? So as far as the efficiency for lack of manpower going out there reading meters, how much water are we using? Well, I don't have the exact number, but I can get that for you. I mean, it's an estimate, obviously. I mean, as far well, as making a decision, yeah, but there's a section nine hundred thousand dollars. Well, the decision is that yeah. uh, there. There is obviously the, a reduction in labor. Okay, uh, we're going to with this system. You'll know immediately where there's a leak, so that can be no more will people be able to come and get try to get a credit at the end of the month type of thing. Um, that was in the initial proposal. Right, the three, the three proposals. Yeah. Those savings, savings. So we just don't have. Yeah. Right. I don't. You know, there was there, there's a number that is there that I can I can get as far as the projected cost savings. So your, your ROI, your return on investment. When do you get that? Five right. years out? Ten years out? Twenty years out? Well, again, the, 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 the ship is sailed because you've applied, you approved a loan uh, to apply for a loan, and you received a 1.2 million dollar loan grant. Grant, right, I'm sorry, better yet, grant. And, so and so that ship is sailed. So we're obligated. That's why I asked about grants early. So I had yep. saying yes, we're obligated. Grants. And I said, no, no, there's no, no strings attached. This one's got a string attached. This green there's no string attached. Huh? There's no string attached. Well, we got the grant money. But when, when that grant was made, made application for, okay, I don't know what the vote was, but the majority of the board agreed to go for the grant and do the project. Yes. But you're saying the ship has sailed. Well, until this project is approved, the ship hasn't even left the port. It's still in port. That's what we're talking about here. Are we ready to put it to sail? I know I'm ready to put it to sail. <laughs> I need to know where the one point or the one million dollars is going to come from, um, and not just in general terms. Not these general terms. Are, these be part of this. Two two places. These be part of the resolution, so it's part of the public records where it comes is from. Two places. Of it, As I said, there's two places the money can come from: ARPA or allocated revenue from the landfill in 2023. Okay. So you're going to amend this resolution to put that verbiage in? No. Okay. Not at all. all right. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Opposed. That's carried four to one. But that doesn't, even though we voted it in, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get the, the information to Steve eventually, right? What and is the and, 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 uh, yeah, as far as the projected your skull. You don't have to give that information to me. Give it to the person that's asking the questions. Yeah. Yeah. This Absolutely. is what I'm thinking that there's got to be some type of a payback. Oh yeah. For going into this. It's going to be. There's it's a gonna, reason it's gonna, for it. The, uh, the old meters are going to replace. Don't read the water accurately. So now this is going to be read very it accurately. The Plus, it. Uh, every, now if you were here at the last meeting, you know I voted against. You know. You know, giving away a half a million gallons of water, I voted against that. And, and hopefully, we'll never have to vote on any of those water breaks again because 
the computer will read, hey, there's a problem at this place, and they'll send out a crew to fix it immediately or call the homeowner. I don't mean to text it. Right? A drop in pressure. Yeah. Okay, drop in pressure, whatever it is. Uh, but I will get that, you're 100% right, I'll get that information uh, to board members, uh, Churchill and the other board members, and I'll make sure that uh, I have that number. Well, it has to be approved. If the board has to approve that additional million dollars. No, I, I, I was talking about the cost savings. The oh, okay, well, the ROI, that's it. But, but this board really needs to approve where which, that money comes from. Which will be done in the 2023 budget. But we've got, here's the, 2023 budget the car, here's the horse. Parts pulling the horse. Okay, uh, where the town board realizes the need for parts in the water main repair parts line, uh, item FB F eight three four zero four three nine materials for service line. Uh, whereas there's enough to in line item, uh, the back truck line item due to the sale of the old back truck could transfer such funds to cover the cost. Uh, now, therefore, be it resolved, the town of Seneca Falls Town Board has hereby authorized the budget modification. I mean, the motion that we uh, purchase the parts that we need. You. And second, please. Second, please. Yeah. Second. Thank you. Align it. And, uh, Do you have any questions? Is the movement of money from one line item to the other? Uh, uh, you? Is this approval? We put it out to bid. The parts. This is uh, approval to move money that's allocated in one line item to another line item to buy parts that you need to maintain the water. So we have to uh, locate for the lead service line inventory. We need to locate valves. We need to inventory what material is on the ground. So this is only the start of that. Yeah. And to eliminate Forge Main on Chapel Street. So it's two properties. And okay. if this is approved to move the funds, Next month, I'll be coming back with bids for approval of whoever was the lowest bid on the bonds. Okay. And uh, if you look at the uh, water upgrades in the VNL's uh, evaluation, that two point or $24.4 million project, uh, some of that stuff is lead related. Uh, Lisa, we applying for a grant there too, right? Yes, yeah, so that's separate from the water treatment right. plant. That is the water distribution system. We on uh, August 31st submitted um, for a lead service inventory. There's some federal money out there, right? Sorry? There's, is that a federal money? Yes. Yeah, yeah I believe so. I would have to double check. But um, so that will basically assist the town in locating or preparing the inventory for these lead service um, lines that will need to be replaced. Thank you. Any further questions? So, so Joe, we are two-thirds, if I understand, we're two-thirds of the way through the year. We have four months left, and our line item for parts is bone dry. I wouldn't say it's bone dry, but we need to get ahead of this lead service line inventory, and we need, we're going to need more parts than we do. So I would say it's just about. All right. We're buying a lot of, a lot of parts and more than Okay. Thanks. Any further questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carry. This is a resolution. So yeah. Does anybody need one of these? Yes. Please. Can you pass that to Steve? Steve. Uh, I have a resolution here. Uh, whereas Wyatt Nicholson retired from the Town of Center Falls yeah. Park and Recreation. Yeah. Whereas the Town of Center Falls and Park Recreation would like to alter its operation to the position of building maintenance mechanic could be replaced the position of cleaner groundskeeper, uh, whereas the town of Santa Claus Park Formation is building an application with the Santa County Civil Service. Uh, now therefore be it resolved that Santa Claus Town Board approves the reclassification from building maintenance mechanic to cleaner groundskeeper. I make a motion that we approve the reclassification. I Thank second. You. Thank you. Uh, this is more of a formality with the civil service of the county. Uh, we have to abolish the position in order for us to solicit the applications uh, for uh, a cleaner groundskeeper. Uh, Missy and Peter and myself have been working together uh, along with Aaron Pasolacqua and we've come up with some strategies to handle the situation uh, and I think put us in a better position. So. Now, whether we're going to be able to fill the position, that's going to be another story. Anyway. 
Uh, any questions for Peter or Missy? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried. I uh, have a motion to pay uh, town credits for, or water credits, I should say, uh, for the packet that you have. I have a question on the water credits. Can I ask it before we get a motion? For a motion? I'm sorry? We need a motion first before I ask my question? Uh, yeah, we'll do it under discussion. Okay, I'll make a motion. Motion, second. Okay, go ahead, Don. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. My, my question is, they want $198.36, but it says we don't have a leak, they don't, the toilet's not running, no sump pump, no pool, nothing has changed in the house, so why are we giving them a credit? I don't understand. They didn't tell us what they fixed, or... Can you tell me what the name is? Because I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, Balsam? Tom Jr.? Mm -hmm. Maybe we took more shots. Can you look at it? Yeah, you can finish. Watch their holes running. Well, that doesn't say anything on there. That doesn't tell us that the hose was running. It just says this didn't happen, this didn't happen, that didn't happen. If it's normally 137.75, then it should be the difference 137.75 from 198. So I believe they had the hose breaking. I believe they left the hose on overnight. Why are we forgiving them the whole bill? It's not our bill. They used 3,200 cubic or 3,100 cubic feet of water, and their their leak goes based off. Well, the credit goes based off of their um, average. So their average is 1,200 feet of water. Uh, and the difference would be 1,900. So my question is, uh, so why didn't they put on there they left their hose on? I don't know why they did um, it. Once in a lifetime credit, so we tell people they apply for their credit, they'll either get approved or they won't get approved. It's up to the down board. But if it's approved and they think they don't have a leak and you approve it, then they can apply for one later on when they do have a leak. But I believe that just what happened in left well, on. What kind of meter do they have? You're asking a lot of questions. I don't have the meter number, so I can't tell you. Oh, oh I think it was on the front. Meter ID seven four three nine. That is an actual correct. Census. Census with mm -hmm. seven. So there's two. They have a census meter. One so they have a new meter. A newish meter. Yes. The newer style ones. Yes. I thought that was going to detect the leaks. Well, we don't have the program for that, so it doesn't okay. detect the leaks until we have the program. It'll happen when it's all installed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have to approve it. You don't have to approve it. It's up to you guys. You can either approve I just it have or a not. problem that they didn't tell us that they left their holes on. To be honest about it, if you're asking us to forgive something, you should be honest with a us. A lot of people not don't like well, I think, to, I, to be honest with you, I, I think they're being more than honest, unfortunately. Uh, well, know, I mean, it's They don't have a leak. They don't, you know. They don't have a pool. They don't have a sub pump. They don't have toilets running. Okay. So, but they did leave their holes on. Oh, I didn't, that's what they, it I think that's what it is. I can't remember because oh, okay. it was three months ago. So I'm, I have a lot in this brain. <laughs> but again, if it's there, if they apply for the once in a lifetime leak credit and they do get something that's bigger down the road, then okay. they're out of luck. But. Uh, all in favor of issuing the water credit, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, please say no. 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 Don. I said no. No. Kaylin? No. 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 I'm Kaylin, I'm sorry. No. I said no. No. You've approved worse. <laughs> okay. That's uh, that's not carried uh, three to two. Uh, Sarah, so in my two plus years here. Oh, it's three no's? Three, three no's. Three no's. Who are the no's? Frank, okay. Frank, 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 you you will reach out to the uh, okay. Yeah, I went further. Uh, I just want to make sure that we mm -hmm. notify them. Okay. I think we did that one other time, didn't we? For someone else. I, I, I think Sarah. I don't know. So I would like more information okay. from okay. them to. No. I will. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. 
I'd be more comfortable knowing accurate information in terms of what happened because if, <laughs> this tells me that there was no issues. Sometimes we can have like toilets that stick. So sometimes they'll be running for a little while and then when somebody goes in and flush it again, it fixes. Something was going on. Know. I just wanted to know what was going on and why the water. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why I just that's want documentation of that. That's all. Thank you. Okay, uh, you have a motion to pay the bills for the month of... I'll make a motion. I second. All in favor of paying the bills? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? If that pays the bill? have a motion to adjourn, please? I make a motion. Me. The second to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Good night. Yeah.